There's some interference. Please go to 14.325 MHz. Over. Roger. Stand by. Do you read? Over. Gail, am I clear? Over. Jambo. Grant, it's good to hear your voice. Habari. Habari, Missouri. I wish it were under better circumstances, Gail. I can't tell you how sorry I am to hear about Frank's death. I know, Grant. I miss him more than I could tell you. Over. What are your plans now? Are you going to stay on in Kenya? This is the only home I know. And Frank loved it here. Over. I wish I could have got out there before. Is there anything I can do for you, Gail? Over. Count on you. I know the director of the institute offered you the position. Will you consider it, Grant? Over. The shock of Frank's death has made me realize I need to change. Maybe this is what I'm looking for. Everybody else is allowed to. Does that mean we'll have a French girl living here? Mm-hmm. For about two weeks, an exchange student. Hmm. Maybe I can improve on my French, too. Morning. Hi, Dad. Nice to see you're both getting along so well. Could be late for work. So, did you think about it? All I need is the airfare, and I've saved money from babysitting, and it's a great opportunity to learn French. Can I go, please? Let her go. Maybe we'll have some quiet around here. Well, I got something to ask you both first. How would you uh, feel about going to Africa? I want to go to Paris, not Africa. Look, there's the school boat. Nicole, did you have time to make any lunch? Bye, Dad. Mm. Uh, no, it's half day today. Teacher study session. Hey, wait a minute, you guys. I asked a question. Do I get an answer? I thought you were kidding. I'm serious. I want to talk to you both about it. I'll meet you both for lunch this afternoon. But I'll be working at the gas station. This afternoon at Neptune's Fish and Chips. George, I need to talk to you for a minute. Sorry, I don't have a minute. Well, I don't have a choice. I have to talk to you now. Grant, give me a break. The Look, Board of George, Governors... there's no easy way to say this. Then don't. I quit. That's ridiculous. I'm really very busy. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm not coming in tomorrow. Dr. Dunbar, is Dr. Roberts there? Eddie's on the phone for him. What, Eddie? No, that's too high. Lower the temperature and increase the salinity of the water. So, what is going on? I need a change. <laughs> Take a holiday. Not a break, a change. Am I missing something? Sorry, Dr. Dunbar. Dr. Woodward is looking for Dr. Roberts. Julie, hold all the calls, will you please? I'm thinking of going back to Africa. What? It's a possibility. 
Frank Prentice. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I'm sorry. I knew he was a good friend of yours. They've offered me his job, George. <laughs> I can't afford to lose you. It's a wonderful opportunity. His research is very important. Well, your job here is very important. You don't understand. It's more than that. You're right. I don't understand. So, explain. I was working as a game warden in Kenya when I met Frank. He was setting up an institute for animal studies, and he asked me to help him. Frank was the kind of person, you know, made you believe that you could do anything. When Claire died, I decided the kids should grow up here, so I came back, and that was the worst possible time from his point of view. I don't regret it, but now maybe I could do something to make it up to him somehow. How? He was more than a friend, George. He was my mentor. I owe him. Well, what about me? Not to mention the aquarium. I'm sorry. I need a couple of days to think it over, George. Would you keep an eye on the kids for me? I don't understand. Are you leaving because Frank died or because you want another job? I don't know, Nicole. A little of both, I think. I'd like to finish school here. And what about my job at the gas station? What about my plans to go to Paris? Think about it, Nicole. Kenya. It's a totally different culture, an entirely new way of life. But, Dad, I love my life right here. And it's more important for me to learn French than Swahili. I gotta go. I'd appreciate it if you two would uh, consider it seriously. You got a charter? Yeah, milk run to deliver some engine parts. You look kind of rough. Okay, if I come along? Sure. I'd love it. And that's it. Ask Julie to type that up, and Kate can analyze the results later. Don't forget, you were going to check the new specimen that came in. Ah. George, I've got a zoological conference from 2 to 6. I will not have a chance to check the results. And what about the beluga? Her regular trainer is still away, and, and she's not eating. I have two interviews this afternoon. I have a meeting with the chairman of the board. Uh, I'll do what I can. Oh, George, we really need to do something. I know. I know. Duke, call Dr. Roberts' house again, will you please? Uh, it's my lunch. It's sushi. I hope it's not out of one of our tanks. Why do I get the feeling that everything's going out of control? Never felt like giving any of this up? What? Lying? My business? What do you mean? I'm not sure. I just quit the aquarium. Oh, yeah, and it snows in the Sahara. Matter of fact, it does. Come on, Grant. Tell me what's going on. Haven't you ever felt sometime like packing it all in and starting on something new? Yeah. <laughs> I did it. I bought this business and sank everything I had into it. And I love it. That Moresby Island? Remember old Tom Scarrow? Oh, yeah, but the chimes, the wind chimes. We haven't seen him in a long time. Let's put her down. Listen. 
Listen, you can hear the wind chimes from here. Oh, I hope he's around. Hi. You boys seen Tom Scarrow, the old man who lives in that cabin? Are you come in that helicopter, mister? Yeah. Then what are you doing here? I'm looking for Tom. He died, old man Scarrow. He died a few months back. But we ain't touched none of his stuff. Honest, mister. Hey, son, don't do that. I weren't hurting no one. Yes, you were. You were hurting that starfish. I know. That's, uh... Uh, do you know where Dad is? Haven't seen him since this morning. So he's going through midlife crises or something? Your dad would... Have you heard you say that? <laughs> Hello? Hi, Nicole. Dad! Where are you? What are you doing? Are you and Jonah doing okay? Yeah, we're fine. Uncle George is here. Good. Tell him I'll be staying at Moresby Island for a couple of days. Sure, I'll tell him. Okay. Well, I'll see you soon. No fun without you, Dad. I miss you lots. I love you both. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. He's gonna stay at Morrisby Island for a couple of days. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I'm more upset by Frank's death than I thought I was. What do you mean? Well, first Frank and now Tom. It's really ironic. I feel terribly helpless and angry. Don't take it so personally, Brand. Well, I don't know how else to take it. Frank and I were about the same age. He was never sick a day in his life. He's in better shape than I am. He's Jonah's godfather. He was Jonah's godfather. <clears throat> Grant, he's dead. And you're going back to Africa won't change anything. I wish you'd consider going with me. My life is here, Grant, and so is yours. Why are you so against my going to Africa? Because you're going for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> How can you say that? How can anybody know the right reasons? You're right. I better get a move on. I've got to deliver those engine parts before dark. JL. Hi. Catch anything yet? Sam said he had a body. I ain't felt nothing yet. Well, my name is Grant Roberts. Uh, his name is Sam. What's your name? Tommy. Well, Tommy and Sam, I want to apologize to you guys for getting angry with you yesterday. My granddad says starfish make good bait. Maybe you don't know what you're talking about, mister. <laughs> your granddad is right, Sam. You know what else a starfish can do? Well, it has five points. And those are like your fingers or your toes. 
And it's shaped like a star, that's why we call it a sea star. But if you cut off one of those points, it can grow another one again. It can grow another one of those points? That's right. Many times as you cut it off, it'll grow another one. So that makes it a pretty special kind of creature, doesn't it? If it dies, can it live again? <laughs> oh, you can't do that. Well, see how we're gonna have to go now. Okay. isn't it? The way his cabin and all his things are still there. It's as though he's going to come back tomorrow. Do you think he'd mind? No, I think he'd be pleased. Here, wrap it up in this. Oh, great. I, uh, forgot to ask if this was a round-trip ticket, but I think I'd like to go home now. Sure. Give me a minute, okay? My granddad says that you're a medicine man. He does. Well, I guess I am, sort of. He says that if you know about snipers, you know about other magic, too. He says you talk to the spirits. Not spirits, exactly. Yeah, for you. You know, Sam, what the starfish does, growing parts of itself back again, that's not magic. It's just what makes the starfish different. All creatures, in some way, have something special about them. Just like you're special. Do you know how the starfish does it? No, Sam, I don't. Maybe someday you'll be a scientist and you'll be the one to find out how he does. Will you come back even though old Tom is dead? Sure, I'll come back and visit you. Okay? See you, Sam. Their bright colors not only attract their friends, but they sometimes repel their enemies as well. You might try that yourself sometime. Right. Now, these lovelies are found only in intertidal pools. Excuse me, Dr. Woodward. Uh, I hope you don't mind, but uh, may I? Yes. It's just that I noticed you... Uh, you went right by one of my favorite displays. Come and take a look at this. Behold the humble scallop. Minding his own business. Lying there quietly doing nothing. Nothing's happening, right? Actually, they filter more than 12 liters of water an hour, even though they have no brain. And yet they can see what's going on through rows of tiny blue-green eyes that peek between the shells. Now watch this. This is a sunflower starfish. Now when we put this little fella into this seemingly peaceful environment,
You see? He creates quite a stir. So you see, things are not always as they seem. Doc Roberts! Am I glad to see you? Hey, Kavna's not eating. Okay, we'll take a look at her. I think she's just having a bit of a sulk. Hey, Dad. Dad! Well, uh, just in time, I, uh, I, I need some answers here, Graham. Yeah, Eddie told me. I thought maybe you were, uh, just feeding her from the wrong corner. What? She's a creature of habit. She feels her domain is being threatened when you change her feeding spot. <laughs> I guess, uh, we're all creatures of habit. Sometimes it takes a good shaking up for things to fall into place. One of the things Frank taught me was to trust my instincts, and that's what I'm going to do. But I made myself some promises, and I intend to keep them. Africa is not what I need. My work here is important. And I love it. But it's meaningless unless I can pass it on. So I want to teach. To share what I know. And if that can happen, George, then I'd like to come back. But I'd need a couple of afternoons a week. Well, things have been pretty hairy around here without you. And uh, it's only been a couple of days. Okay. Well, we talked it over, Dad. And we would have gone with you. Yeah, but we didn't want to. I'm glad uh, not to have lost a colleague. And uh, my bestest friend. Well, I'm back to work, but uh, Georgia, I'd uh, like to take the rest of the day off and spend it with my children. Okay, Grant. See you tomorrow. Now. What are you two doing out of school? 